one of our favorite guests from Yahoo Sports, national columnist Dan Wetzel, back here on the show. How are you doing, Dan? I'm great, Rich. How are you? I'm doing fine. Uh, okay, that? let's uh, let's get right into it. What happened with Greg Schiano yesterday? Best you can tell. Well, I think there's a couple things. One, uh, the fan base word got out he was about to get hired at Tennessee. They had a uh, memorandum of understanding, and uh, the fan base reacted quite negatively. They did not want Greg Schiano to be their head coach. I think most of them didn't want him because they thought they could get a better head coach. Uh, they didn't think he's good enough. Didn't think he'd fit there. Didn't think he'd win. All of those things. Uh, some, I'm going to guess, assume, uh, were upset that he had once worked at Penn State uh, under defensive coordinator Jerry Sandusky. And at one point in one of the many, many depositions in this case was mentioned um, basically as the subject of a rumor that he had seen something and didn't do anything. Uh, and then I think others that just wanted him to not coach at Tennessee because they didn't think he was a good coach jumped on that and everything took off. And so in a matter of a few hours, Tennessee went from uh, about to hire Greg Schiano to backing off Greg Schiano because of the uh, tumult on social media uh, and, and going to far where there were you know people with signs outside Neyland Stadium. And, uh, and probably the most troubling part to me was uh, uh, this rock they have at the University of Tennessee that people, you know, fraternities paint and different things. Uh, straight up said Greg Schiano covered up child uh, child uh, molestation right. at Penn State. Yeah, uh, and had gone from a a, a really uh, a really soft uh, accusation, a here's double hearsay accusation too. He did it. So and, now uh, let's get into, let, let's get let's get into that, Dan, because you were you were at this trial. You covered it. We had you on the show uh, when it was going down. Uh, and now that it is being relitigated in a way, what was let's get into the crux of what Shiano, how how his name was mentioned in that in that trial and why that came up over the last 24, 48 hours. So Shiano was only mentioned in 2015 during a deposition, uh, a civil case involving um, Penn State and its insurer over who basically had to pay all of Sandusky's victims. And in that, in their, in that case, uh, there was a deposition of Mike McQuarrie, who's the kind of famously known as the grad assistant that walked in on Sandusky and a boy in 2001 and then the next day told Joe Paterno about it, um, and nothing was acted on at that time. And, and in that deposition – it was mentioned that uh, McQuarrie had talked to a guy named Tom Bradley, who was a uh, long 30-something year assistant under, under Joe Paterno, uh, about Sandusky. And, and Bradley had told him that one time Greg Schiano had said he had seen something, it literally claimed something, uh, and was white as a ghost about it. And that was the extent, because it really wasn't germane to what they were arguing, that was the extent of the questioning. There was no follow-up, like, what was the something? Uh, when was this? Uh, give us more details or anything like that. Uh, that got released about uh, 18 months ago when there was an unsealing of some documents. There's a little bit of attention to it, but that was the extent of the case. And, it's, it, again, it's a double hearsay situation um, Shiano denied it. Tom Bradley denied it. And I think what's important to note is there's, there's no other accusations from anybody else. There's no evidence that this happened. There's no corroboration. McQueary was the star witness for the prosecution for the attorney general in four criminal cases. Uh, Sandusky, the AD, the president of the school, and the vice president, all of them went away. Uh, he, he met with the police and met with the uh, prosecutors for years. And so presumably he told them the same story also. And they never pursued Greg Schiano or Tom Bradley on these charges. Uh, there's no criminal charge against them. There was no, uh, Schiano was never questioned about it, uh, you know, and so on. No victim came forward. There's no kid that said, yeah, I was in a shower once. And Greg Schiano walked in. Uh, there's no civil cases against them. No lawyer took the case and tried to sue Schiano for this. Um, you know, he's rich, he's famous, all of that. The prosecution that would desperately want to nail 
Tom Bradley particularly, and Greg Schiano to a lesser extent in this case, didn't, didn't go after it. But success, there's just nothing really here where they would have. <laughs> now, I don't know what happened. I don't know that, and you don't know, and nobody knows, except maybe Greg Schiano, I assume Greg Schiano, what he did see or if this story is possibly true. But what we do know is there's absolutely no proof and no other corroboration or evidence that would ever make you say, I'm going from this kind of accusation to I'm going to paint a rock that says Greg Schiano covered up child molestation at Penn State. It's a massive leap, barren of facts. And so I think I wrote a column just basically explaining how all the details of this case, because most people haven't read hundreds and hundreds of pages or sat through all this stuff. Uh, and I think that's the part that's terrifying is it just went from this sort of accusation that nobody really took seriously to he did it. And forget losing the Tennessee job. Uh, you know, I'm sure Greg Shano is a little shook at his reputation. He's basically been convicted by some of these people for being committing one of the worst crimes you ever could commit, which would just be saying, I watched a guy molest a child and walked away. It's just, you know, it's almost un fathomable than anyone would do. Dan Wetzel of Yahoo Sports joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So, Shiano now goes back to <clears throat> coordinating the defense for a uh, for an Ohio State team that has uh, title hopes still and a Big Ten title uh, as well. So, e- either either e- either uh, Shiano um, is being uh, is being nailed for something that he did do, okay, or an Ohio State. <laughs> has paid it no mind at all or this whole thing stinks to high heaven dan right i mean you is there a gray area is there a gray area in here no i I think the gray area would be you know saying i don't think we should hire greg Schiano because he did work for jerry sandusky and he was meant and i just don't want to have anything to do with penn state i don't think that's necessarily fair to greg Schiano, but i would get that i think that's a gray area Saying Greg Schiano did it is completely unfair. Right, and and and, 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 this, and this Ohio State was saying that's fine. That's fine to have yeah. him here. I mean, wouldn't Ohio State look through it? Uh, you know, Tennessee had investigated. Look, there was a there, again. There were four criminal trials. There was a whistleblower lawsuit. There were over thirty civil suits against Penn State. There was an internal investigation led by Louis Free, the former FBI director that Penn State put out this 400-something pages. At no point did Greg Schiano come up in any of them. You know, so it's, it's like so it's a game. Of, and, and, you know, there's a reason hearsay is not admissible. I know it's a court of public opinion, but everyone knows it's a game of telephone. Like one guy told another guy he heard something 15 years ago. That is a reason that's not admissible. And, it's, and, and, and I don't believe – Mike McQuarrie put it out there to try to crush, you know, I don't know what he said. You, you, if you read this thing in the, in the thing, you immediately stop and go, well, what do you mean something? What do you mean about this? What do you say about this? There's none of that. So Shiano doesn't have any really way to defend himself on it. So, uh, you know, to me, you can be suspicious. I don't, I don't know, but you certainly, the same thing, you don't know the other way. And there's really just, the guess is if there was something there to pursue, the prosecutors in Pennsylvania, the attorney general, would have gone after Tom Bradley and, and Greg Schiano with everything they had. These were big fish they could have caught in this, and they didn't for a reason. And that suggests they didn't think there was any crime here. So was, is Schiano the first coach who's been hired uh, or fired after being hired because of Twitter and Facebook, would you say? Probably. I mean, I, we've seen coaches walk away from schools, but you just never see a school walk away from a coach. And the idea that this went down, um, the anger and, the, and the, just the, the, the amount of, of pressure put on the AD. And, you know, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not opposed to fans voicing their opinion. Uh, you know, and if you sat there and said, I don't, again, I don't like him because I don't think he's going to be a good enough coach for it. So, hey, I'm really nervous to have anything to do with Penn State. I get that. I think that's your gray area or totally acceptable. It's when you just sit there and start putting out, he did it. He did it. That's a little terrifying. That's a lot terrifying. And, you know, I know it's 2017 and facts don't matter and 
we just do whatever we want and tweet whatever you want and anything goes. But, you know, so I probably sound like I'm 100 years old saying maybe we could have a little bit of – everyone could take a moment and read what you're about to conclude before painting the rock. But um, I, 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 I did kind of like that level of society a little better than this one. Dan, always love our chats. We'll chat again soon. Thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Rich. You got it. Check it out. Uh, Dan Wetzel's column on all of this. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.